Here is Mark Larry talking about capital budgeting. Hello everyone. Uh, I have a little question for you in regards to capital budgeting. For this question, it is ABC Company has the opportunity to invest in a project that will bring in a yearly cash flow of $400,000 for the next five years. The cost of the project is $1,200,000 up front. ABC Company shareholders require at least a 9% return on all projects. So now we will act as financial planners, CFOs, etc. for ABC Company and we're going to take a look at the NPV rule. Should we accept this project with the NPV rule? Net present value, internal rate of return rule, and then we're going to take a look at what is the project's modified internal rate of return. For the first part, the present value, we're going to have to find the present value of $400,000 per year for five years at our required rate of return of 9%. So when we put that in the calculator, it comes out to be $1,555,861. Now, we need to subtract the initial outlay, our initial payment of $1.2 million from our present value calculated up here. So, a net present value of three hundred and fifty five eight sixty one and we are going to accept this project using the MPV rule because the value is greater than one. Now looking at the internal rate of return, uh, what, what that is is our initial outlay right here of 1.2 million. What is the discount rate that will bring this $400,000 a year equal to 1.2 million? So when we take, pick up our calculators, we're going to want to put 1.2 million, negative 1.2 million in for the present value. For our payment, it's $400,000 a year because that's the cash flows we're getting every year if we choose to do this project. Future value is zero or just leave it. And it's a five year project. And then compute for the interest rate. And that'll give us our internal rate of return, which comes out to be. 19, I'm sorry, 19.86%. Now we're going to choose to accept this project if looking at this rule. Our investors required rate of return was 9% and we are getting 19.8%, 86% on this project. I think uh, that they'll be pretty happy with that, so we will accept the project. Okay, now we're taking a look at our modified internal rate of return for this problem. Now with, that, with the modified internal rate of return, we're assuming that we can reinvest our cash flows at our required rate of return, which was 9%. So, for example, at the end of the first year, we're getting a cash flow of $400,000. We're assuming that for the next four years until the project's over with, we can invest that $400,000 at 9%. So we take the future value of $400,000 for four years, and this is what we get right here, $564,633, and then so on and so forth. For the first year, it's four, four more years left to invest. Second year is three more years. Third year is two more years left to invest. The fourth year is one more year left to invest. 
and the fifth year we don't have any time at all because the project's over with. So we take the future value of all those cash flows and we come up with $2,393,885. Now, this is just like a internal rate of return problem. We need to find out what interest rate discounted back would take this number back to 1.2 million. So, when we look at our calculators, we go negative 1.2 million as our present value. Payment will be zero. 200, or I'm sorry, 2,393,885 dollars will be our future value. It will be for five years, this is a mistake, but assume five years. And then we solve for I, just like we did. And that will give us our modified internal rate of return. Of 14.81%. And again, this is, this should be five years.